Cooking Crave, brought to you by ENG Lending, your area's number one choice for home loans, 456loan.com. Coming up on today's episode, we have a different twist on a tater tot casserole. We're going to add some taco to it. That's all coming your way next. Hi, I'm Rhonda Fitterer. And I'm Laverne Didi. And we found a recipe this week that we wanted to share with our viewers. It's a tater taco casserole. Yeah. So I know a tater tot casserole is always a easy staple in our house to make, but I'm excited to see the taco part. The taco seasoning in it, yes. If you want to cook along with us, just grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down these ingredients. You need a, you're going to need a pound of grown beef, a small onion, a clove of garlic, a four ounce can of diced green chilies, a package of taco seasoning, a 15 ounce can of black beans, a 12 ounce package of frozen corn, three cups of cheese, and a 28 ounce package of tater tots. And then we're going to, oh, I did forget. Uh, it's a 10 ounce can of red enchilada sauce. And then toppings as you desire, olives, sour yeah. cream, tomatoes, whatever you want. That's correct. All right, and you found this recipe to pair with it. It is a dessert, apple pecan pie with vanilla sauce. Sounds good. So I'm, 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 I'm excited about the tater tots, but I'm also excited about this. <laughs> For this recipe, you're gonna need a cup of applesauce and a cup of white sugar and a cup of pecans, half a cup each of brown sugar, corn syrup, and butter, you need three large eggs, Two table, excuse me, two teaspoons of cornstarch, half teaspoon of salt, and nine inch pie shell. And then for the crumbles, you're gonna need four tablespoons of butter, a, a fourth cup of flour, half a cup of brown sugar, and a fourth teaspoon cinnamon or nutmeg. Oh, cinnamon and nutmeg, yeah. excuse me. Mm -hmm. And then for the vanilla sauce, four egg yolks, two teaspoons cornstarch, a cup of cream and milk, a fourth cup of sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I know that's a lot of ingredients, it but it's not a hard recipe. It's not. All right. Not so where do you want to get started? Well, we want to get our uh, tater taco casserole in the oven. And I got that out right. OK. I We can try to practice that to 10 times in a row, huh? Throw it aside three times well, in no, a row. you got it right the first time. You don't need to do anything. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, we do have the oven on at 375. Okay. That's what the casserole is going to bake on. Now, I did put my tater tots on a cookie sheet. And while we're preparing the hamburger, that we're going to put these in the oven because we want to get them just a little bit crisper. So when we top the beef uh, mixture on it, it, you know, the tater tots are going to be a little bit crispier okay. up with the casseroles. So. Okay. So we'll just pop that in the oven and we'll come over here. And I'm going to turn my skillet on. And um, I got a pound of lean ground beef. Okay. Now, if you uh, have beef, you know, I always like to start with lean. But yet, you know, if it isn't quite so lean, you can always strain it. Sure. So let me get this chopped up a little bit. And I'm going to add my onions in here, too, when I'm... Uh, getting my hamburger cooked here and browned. And even this one too did sound like quite a few ingredients, but you know, pretty simple. Yes. Not too hard. Most ingredients you would have already in your kitchen. Yes. So then, um, and it says a small onion chopped. Okay. So we're gonna Gonna get that in there, and you know, me and my fingers. We want to get this going with the onions. Then we're going to add, uh, kind of towards the end, when it's almost done, add the clove of garlic. Okay. Um, the rest. That's what the recipe says to me. It would be like, hey, add it in right away. Save a step. But. As long as you have it there, you're not going to forget it. Uh, right. Absolutely. <laughs> and so. Because then now with this here, 
you know, uh, green chilies. That's going to spice it up a little bit. They're not hot, but they're, you know, like yeah. mild. And with the taco seasoning, so it's going to be a spicier. Um, well, just like with any recipe, they, the ingredients come in different flavors that you can go from mild to hot. So Absolutely, yes. You can certainly make it as spicy as you want no. to. And even uh, your enchilada sauce, when you purchase that, you uh, can uh, have medium, mild, or, or, you know, the hot. So mm -hmm. you can certainly make it to taste. Well, this is starting to cook up nicely here. And I want to get that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add my cloves. Uh, I meant my garlic clove. Okay. And, uh, you know, just even cooking this up here, you know, I can see that I'm not going to need to drain it at all. No. Because there really is no fat in that. Yeah, when I saw this recipe, it, it intrigued me just for the fact that our family, we like tacos, mm -hmm. and we like tater tot off dish. So. so that goes together well, yeah. Well, and it, it's, it's so much easier putting a casserole together, putting that in the oven, and getting some other things ready instead of having to be right at that stove cooking the whole meal. Let the oven do some of it for you, yep. the work. So... And like any thing, I you could certainly prepare this in advance too, and just have it in the fridge and be able to pop it in the oven when you get home from work. Sure. Okay, so that's getting about ready there. Maybe just another minute or so. And so now at this point, we're just going to add the ingredients um, and put it in our casserole pan. Right. And you need we're going to need to spray that. So a 9 by 13 uh, baking dish. All right. May look to our viewers that we have a lot of ingredients on our, on our counter today, but I think it was more on the, the pecan pie side of it. That's right, because that's all in order right there. And so... Wait. That's what my, your dad said. My goodness, you got a lot of ingredients. And I had that comment from the cameraman, and, and you commented <laughs> when you come in, that's a lot of ingredients. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to be able to add our can of beans, I mean chilies. Good job, green chili. And then it says a packet of taco seasoning. Mm -hmm. And I always buy mine in bulk. And a packet is about three tablespoons. Yep. So that's what we're going to add next. And buying this in bulk like that, it makes it go a lot. I mean, it, you can do a lot of tacos with that per, versus buying the individual packs. So let's just get that mixed. And it's, it's something that if you use it a lot, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now uh, it says 12 ounces of frozen corn. And I'll just get that open here. And there we go. And you're going to need a pretty good size skillet to be yeah. able to uh, mix all these ingredients because if you don't have that, you might have to mix like uh, the beans and the uh, cheese and corn separately mm -hmm. because it's going to be probably, you know, you might have I'm too so much. If our, so if our viewers do have an electric skillet like you have here, that might be the best way. There's not too many pans that you can put on the stove, maybe a Dutch oven. Yes. And I had even, you know, considered that because that'll brown your hamburger just as well. Mm -hmm. Now it says a can of black beans uh, and you want to drain them. So we rinse and drain. So we did that. So we get that in there. So 
So this makes a generous casserole. When you look at all of these ingredients and then, you know, the 28 ounces of uh, uh, tater tots, too. Yes. It's not quite that full. Uh, so you bake. want to start with a, a rather deep casserole dish, not yeah. just a probably a regular 9 by 13 pan. Yeah. Yes. Um, this is maybe a smidge bigger than some of my other 9 by 13, maybe about an inch or so, and that's why I wanted to take that one. Now we're going to use, put two cups of the Mexican cheese in here. Okay. And melt that. And then we're going to uh, keep a cup aside for uh, putting it on the end, just topping it, you know, uh, when the casserole is about done, then we'll top it with the cheese. Okay. And put it back in the oven there, so. So we want this, this the majority of it melted in with the right. hamburger two, mixture. Two cups out of the three, yes. And so the majority of this is getting undone by the skillet, and we're already, you know, baking our tater tots, so those are crisp. Do we have to bake that for any, uh, like, an extended length of time just to meld all those flavors together? Um, it says about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. And any casserole, I like to go uh, usually the 40 minutes, make sure it's good and hot. But okay. one thing now with this here, this is going to be hot. We have our tater tots in the oven, and so they're going to start getting hot and not be frozen when we put on top of it. So that right. that really helps with the cooking time. Okay, it looks like that cheese is melted in there. And so we're going to add the enchilada sauce. The red sauce doesn't get added in right now. It gets poured over it gets the tater tots. That's correct. Okay. Yes. So we can unplug that. And I'm going to just put that recipe to the side here and bring this over here. Surely that smells favor flavorful. Absolutely. You know, with that. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is get my spatula. So as you see, when we're putting this in, uh, there's not a lot of uh, liquid to this. No, not at all. You start it with a lean beef, so that mm -hmm. makes a big difference right yeah. there. And you would have drained that if you hadn't, so we'll set that over here. Okay. Oh, that smells great already. Well, and that certainly um, resembles, like you say, a Mexican dish with the corn and the black beans in there and all that. So we just even that out. And might need the spatula for something. So I'm going to go get the tater tots out of the oven. Okay. And so we're just going to put them on top and just kind of layer that. I'm going to spread them out evenly here. There we go. Oh, I see that. When they said 28 ounces, you know, that really does cover the whole casserole very nicely with those. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So now we got to grab the red sauce and just, you know, slow, you know, just drizzle it uh, as evenly as you can. Top there. And 
And the, so the reserved cheese, are we putting that on right away or do we have to put this in and bake it and bring it out five We're, minutes prior to? Correct. Okay. We, we want to melt that last cheese on there. Yes. So, whoop, won't fit in there. So now, uh, so you're going to bake it uncovered. Okay. Because you do still want your tater tots to get a little crispy yet uh, and bake. So if you put a aluminum foil or something over there, that's going to make a difference. So, so what we do, let's, let's start the oven at 35 minutes. Okay. And then we'll check it because then we'll put the rest of the cheese on and put it back in the oven for five more minutes. Perfect. Stay ahead of the game with ENG Lending, North Dakota's number one choice for home loans. Let Jay and his home loan specialist help you when it comes to purchasing your new home or refinancing your existing one. Make the smart choice. Call ENG Lending at 456 Loan. That's 456 5626. Call 456 Loan right now. Okay, now we're going to start with our pie. This sounds like a great pie. It is going to be. We'll just set that aside. And uh, I already made um, my pie shell here. Okay. You know, just go ahead and, I mean, I, I a while back we did some pie, uh, pie crust recipe. Yes. And I like to make mine and then I, you know, make big recipe, freeze the balls, and then I can bring out... Um, and just make my own crust. Well, and if you if you didn't want to make your own crust, you certainly could you purchase can, absolutely if you wanted to. Absolutely. So, oh, I guess you don't really need the. Nope. You need. To, you're the one who needs to know how that to do I it. know how to do it. Okay. All I'm right. confident that you know how to do it, Mom. Okay. I'm going to just set this over here out of my way, and I need to bring over my mixer. And we're going to want to melt our butter okay in there so let's just put that in the microwave for 20 seconds or so and so it's going to be easy we're going to just uh, add all our uh, ingredients we have the cup of sugar okay and the cup of applesauce Ooh. Doesn't take. Popping. <laughs> okay. There we go with that. And uh, half a cup of the brown sugar. And the butter. Because we just have to put all those ingredients together and mix it. There's nothing that we have to beat prior. The Short uh, corn syrup here. Okay. Half a cup. And then we have uh, two teaspoons of cornstarch. Okay. And that just is going to help thicken it up a little bit, yes, correct? Yes, correct. And it has about a half a teaspoon of salt and not too much. And then... <laughs> Uh, I put my pecans in at when I'm done because I just stir those in. I don't want to beat it up in there. So okay. And it says four large, uh, and excuse me, three large eggs. My eggs are kind of medium, so I'm actually going to use four. Okay. But it says three large eggs, so being mine are just a little bit soft. I mean smaller uh, this time around. We're gonna use that. This recipe just really kind of intrigued me, you know, saying an apple pecan pie. Sure. You need the applesauce and, and pecans because love that pecan pie. And this would probably be maybe a, not quite as sweet as a pecan pie. So we'll just do that. So let's just get this next step here. And, you know, there is a few extra steps to it, I know, but... Still, so we'll put this here so we don't forget to put that in. Okay. Um, this is a, a 
half cup flour, I believe, or was it a fourth? Let me just, yeah, no, it's just a fourth cup flour and a fourth cup brown sugar. And you know, now when I think when I measured it, I think I measured a half cup. Let's just see. All right. Just, just to make sure. Oh, it does say half cup. So I do, it did remember correctly. And then the butter, I'm going to just put it in the microwave for maybe about six seconds. Just to, I don't want it liquidy, but I, because we're going to just blend this. Okay. And then we also put our four teaspoons of ned, nutmeg and c uh, cinnamon in here. Okay. And this is for the crumble. We just put that on top of the pie okay. before we bake it. So I can even just wait that five seconds right here. Butter doesn't take long. No. Well, especially if you've had it out, you know, at room temperature. Yes, I, and I have. So. <clears throat> okay, let's just mix this up here. So this pretty much, uh, well, on a pecan pie, you don't put a top crust on it anyway. But uh, this kind of constitutes that a uh, little bit uh, of a crust on top. Yes. Does he think that helps prevent it from like um, boiling over or cooking over when it's in the oven a little bit? Um, I wouldn't say so. Okay. But you know, it just it just might. So. I mix that up as much with my with the fork, and, and after I put that, I'll mix it up a little bit more with my hand before we put that on top. Okay. So I just want to blend that a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to just whip it just a couple more seconds here. So we'll put our cup of pecan, chopped pecans in here. Okay. And I'll just stir that up here. Get and that poured in. And do you have, what size pie dish do you have here? Okay, the one I have here, and I, you know, wanted to mention, I mean, it does say a nine inch and I know that this is a 10 inch. Okay. And uh, I may have, I baked one prior and definitely I certainly like the idea of the uh, 10 inch versus just the nine because it's full. It's gonna be a nice. Uh, yeah, once you add this, this uh, you know, yes. on there as well. Very much so. So let's just mix that a little bit better there. Always works better with the hand. Work with what God gave you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll sprinkle those on. Yeah, and so the, the white sauce, that is something that we put on at like as a, almost like as a whipped cream at the end. We don't put that on prior to baking. We're going to make, make, mix it up, and uh, that's something that you put on just right before you serve. Okay. You know, on that, so. Okay. So, we'll just. And, and this has a nice, nice feel. Now, got to remember if sometimes a person thinks, oh, a little more butter might be, yeah, it's always good. But then your crumble is going to be more pasty. It's going to be harder to spread. So okay. you want to make sure you don't use more butter than the recipe says. Okay. Because I'm, I'm one that, oh, I have a dab left, put it in and use it. <laughs> but sometimes that's not always the best option. Okay. 
Okay. Good so, tip. All right. Spread that out. So it just makes a nice crumble. And it just gives, at the end, a very nice color to it. Now, when I'm baking a pie like that, I always like to put uh, something around the edges, uh, foil, or I have this metal piece. It helps from the edges getting too dark until the pie is done. Because this, it says to bake it 50 minutes and, or until uh, it's set. And uh, it does take right at that 50 minutes. Okay. But just to put that over and it really does make it, does help. So now I'm going to put that in the oven. And you're going to help me remember this has 20 Six seconds on with 56 50 minutes or 26 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Thank you. So when we take out the uh, casserole and stuff, we'll be adding another, what, 24 minutes on to the yes. pie. Okay. So now, and this is something too that I think, you know, a lot of people may not even have. Uh, it says, you know, and I'm going to use this one oh, again, okay. uh, a double boiler. Um, and how many sets of um, cookware come with double boilers anymore? Uh, they don't. They don't. Uh, and the reasoning with that was so that, uh, you know, you don't uh, scorch it. Or we're going to have some egg yolks and cornstarch. And, and we're going to add, add uh, cream and milk and a little bit of sugar in there. You don't want that too hot so that you curdle the egg, you know, it, it'll curdle if you get it too hot. Okay. But I think, you know, you're going to be fine if you just put it in the microwave and do it on a slower heat and stuff. So microwaves are awesome. They pretty much take care of the double boilers. So, okay. so we're going to add the egg yolks in here. And then we're, we want a little bit of thickening. So okay. we have two teaspoons of uh, uh, cornstarch here. Okay. And cornstarch does really stick in there. I probably should have just put the teaspoons in there. But even when you take out a teaspoon of cornstarch, it, it does really like to stick to your spoon. And that. So, and now we're going to add a little bit of vanilla. Okay. So, so what we're going to do here, because I want a little bit more room than that, I'm just going to use this uh, I have a cup of milk and a cup of cream here. Okay. And did you use like a heavy whipping cream or was it a half and half? Uh, I used my heavy whipping cream. Now, if all you had was half and half, don't, you know, I would just use two cups of that versus, you know, a cup of milk and a cup of half and half. Okay. So you want that. So we, that's basically what you're doing. Right. Is, is making a half and half. Yes. So if you have that, so we're going to just... Mix this up here. And then we're going to put this in the microwave because we do want to heat this up. Oh, okay. So we'll just bring that over here. And I'm going to start with about 2 minutes and 25 seconds just to get that going here. So let's, we want to. You want to make sure you blend your uh, cornstarch in cold because if you would put your cornstarch in um, something hot, it, it lumps. Okay. You have to have corn, uh, get your cornstarch uh, mixed in with something cold. And that's why we're doing that with the egg yolks. So can you do, I mean, it, just not warm. I mean, you could do it at room temperature if you took... And like when oh. you're making gravy or something, yeah. and, you know, with cornstarch, mm -hmm. you just put a little water. Okay. Yeah, you know, your water right out of the, you know, the faucet is just fine. But you just don't want to ever use hot okay. because that's definitely going to lump up your cornstarch. Okay. And cornstarch is my favorite thickening even over flour. And with the idea with so many people that are gluten intolerant, you can have the cornstarch thickening flour. Versus, uh, versus flour, sure. Right. Absolutely. So we're going to bring this over here. And I actually have my double boiler going because this 
here said it, cookware is your grandma Dee Dee's uh, really, I mean her set, which just makes it kind of old. Yep. But it's a real heavy stainless steel. And I'm going to just put some light on the situation here. So we want to start heating this up before we add the, the, the milk cream mixture. That we can, yes. But I want to put that down a little bit. We you know, don't that's going to heat it up pretty fast. So we want to make sure that when that's done, we'll slowly stir it in. Okay. So, of course, a double boiler, you got to put water in the bottom because you can't. That's what Is there done. any specific amount you're supposed to put in? No. No. Okay. Just whatever it's going to work, you know, to make sure that that's. Let's see. Put enough in that you don't have okay. to worry about it um, oh, boiling yeah. dry. Yeah, that looks. That's warm. So we're going to stop. So we're going to put that here. And I'm slowly going to just add that in here and keep stirring it as I uh, cook in it. Okay. And so then what we're going to do is we're just going to let this cook up uh, until it gets thickened. Okay. And like I said, this is what you put over your pie when you serve it. So is this going to have uh, any type of consistency? Um, like a whipped cream or is it going to be it's just gonna be a sauce it's gonna be just it's a vanilla sauce so okay. yes okay so that already is in there we've got those eggs and that uh, in there okay should have just got a little bit of sugar that's settled yeah do you want to give me a spatula sure because there's a little bit more sugar in here than I should have just taken my whisk and uh, Whisk it up before I start pouring. Okay. So now with this here, um, we're going to just leave that simmer, and we're going to be able to just we'll stir that occasionally, and we're going to just wait till our casserole and uh, pie is done. Awesome. Yeah. So. We'll, we'll be like back with our viewers shortly. We'll just stir this occasionally, right, that they just know. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but not an excessive time. So, okay. And I think this, too, you could make prior if you wanted to and, and just maybe warm it up when you serve it. Okay. Sounds so, great. Okay. Country Rose Cafe on East Villard is open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week. Enjoy daily homemade specials, caramel and cinnamon rolls, several different kinds of homemade pies made fresh every day. Country Rose Cafe is also famous for homemade soup, including their ever popular Nefla served every Tuesday. While you're in, make sure to pick up your Channel 18 cooking crave recipes and like us on Facebook for different specials and announcements. Country Rose Cafe, the way a cafe should be. Located at 837 East Villard in Dickinson. Uh, the timer is going off for our casserole. And as we had talked previously, that the last five minutes we were putting on the rest of the cheese, right. which we did that, so it's going to be ready to take out. Okay. But now we're going to put the timer back on for what? Uh, see, we had 26 minutes and five minutes, so we need tw 19 more minutes 19. to make. So for, for the pie. And we'll check that, and if that needs to be a little bit more, we can do that, but it just so that it sets up. Oh, look at how oh, great that looks. That looks awesome. Yeah. Can you tell the um, tater tots are certainly crispy? They are, and, and that's definitely gonna be better. Yes. You know, we're gonna enjoy that more. So we'll bring that over, and oh, you're I'll, I'll just set it on here. Okay. And. We'll just get a spoon out there. And because our pie is still baking and it takes a bit, I did make a pie previously. So we can take it out and show it. And okay. uh, I'll come over and get the white sauce. And, or I should say the vanilla sauce. It's not a white sauce. And it certainly did thicken up. It did. That looks really good. So we will just be putting that over the top of the pie. Uh, you know, individual pieces and stuff, so. And I do have some toppings for our uh, tater taco casserole. Yes. Um, 
it says, you know, oh, here we are going to need a mitt. Oh, no. that smells great. Doesn't it, though? And while I'm taking out the piece of pie, I'm going to let you garnish that. So. And again, I, I think this is something that, I mean, you just, you have a couple of the garnishes that they had suggested on the recipe, but there would be nothing to say that you couldn't do um, like peppers or jalapenos or anything like that. Absolutely, as a, yeah. And they had mentioned something about um, cilantro. That's yes. not usually my favorite uh, thing. I like that, but uh, um, so got it. So I've got the piece of pie here, and I'm going to take that sauce, and we're going to just put some of that sauce over there. All right. Oh. Smells so good. And really, there was a lot of ingredients for both recipes, but they weren't hard. They weren't hard, and uh, look at here we are already. That's right. That's yeah. right. To like, get these recipes, just go to our website, consolidatednd.com. Please submit your recipes for us to cook for the rest of the viewing audience at home. Thank you so much to our sponsors, and join us next week on Cooking Crave when we do it all over again.